fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and I'm focused on spreading magic by discussing Disney, DreamWorks, and animation. And today I want to discuss why Prince Charming showed up to the Dragon's Keep after Fiona was on her honeymoon. How come he didn't get to Fiona's tower before Shrek and Donkey? And of course, if you are new here and you'd like to join this passionate community of animation fans, then consider subscribing. And what does she find? Some gender-confused wolf telling him that his princess if I could just... is already married. I mean, it wasn't my fault. He didn't get there in time. Charming was kind of the ideal person to have saved Fiona. He was a prince who was brave, strong, formidable, with a splash of dash and good looks, who we would often associate with a hero, and Charming knew that as well. When Shrek 2 begins, we are in the middle of him explaining his fairy tale story. Every step of the journey, he was moving towards his happily ever after, just as his mother had always told him. So what took him so long to actually get to Fiona since it was very, very important for him to become king of Far, Far Away? Wouldn't you think it would be imperative that he made the journey to travel the world, slay the dragon, and get the girl as soon as possible? Well, yes, I think Charming and his mother fairy godmother knew that he had to go accomplish that quest, but it seemed like they never thought that anyone would have actually gone and succeeded. The flame! Truly, it seemed that whoever had put Fiona in the highest room of the tallest tower really didn't want anyone to get to her very easily. <coughs> fairy godmother. Yeah, of course it was the fairy godmother. I, I totally think so. And if you want to see my entire explanation around why I think fairy godmother was the witch who cursed Fiona, I'll leave that linked down below. And I bring it up because it just seemed that the knights who came to the castle were destined to fail. And I believed that Fiona's misfortune was all orchestrated by fairy godmother. She wanted her son to marry into the royal family, had secured that promise by King Harold by transforming him into a human, and it seemed that locking her away was the best plan of action to ensure that no one could get to her heart before Charming. For Fiona's entire life, she had been prepared for the day where Charming would come to rescue. Up until that point, it's possible that no person with much power, wealth, and influence had fought their way into the prison, especially in the unconventional way that Farquaad was going about rescuing her. As Fiona explains to Shrek, the person who saves her is traditionally supposed to be her true love. Princess, I was sent to rescue you by Lord Farquaad, okay? He's the one who wants to marry you. But I have to be rescued by my true love. What this means is all of those men who came after Fiona were all going in alone hoping to marry the princess themselves. And when they died, that meant that one more interested party had been destroyed as well. The competition for Charming was literally being taken out one by one by a dragon, but Farquaad was doing it differently. He decided that he would send a champion to save Fiona, and if that person didn't make it, Farquaad wouldn't give up, he'd just send the runner up, and so on and so forth. But of course, it was a sacrifice he was willing to make. This was a radically new approach that Farquaad planned to use to get Fiona to Duloc, which meant Charming finally had a threat to Fiona's hand in marriage. While I'm sure Charming really couldn't have gone on this mission for most of his life because he had to prepare for the dangerous quest that laid before him, at 12 years old, I don't think he could have slayed a dragon. Now he was forced to act urgently. I think his whole life was likely built around this one adventure by Fairy Godmother. The importance of him saving Fiona could not have been expressed any more to him, which likely meant that he learned, trained, and prepared so that he would become one of the greatest warriors in the world so that he could succeed and save Fiona and become king. Of course, it could have just been a coincidence that Charming arrived right after Shrek married Fiona. Maybe this had always been the time Charming had prepared to arrive, but I don't buy that. There is the possibility that the Charming family was too egotistical and arrogant to see that there were people who could tear their plans apart, but that would have left their plot to be so vulnerable and would absolutely undermine Fairy Godmother's intelligence. She had her son's hand committed to the princess of far, far away before that princess was even born, so I don't think Fairy Godmother would have left her son's fate to a dragon alone. There's no way the magical Fairy Godmother did not know that her son's future was being stripped away by a lord and his heroic ogre. She had too much power, influence, and resources to be unaware of who was going after Fiona. Who knows, maybe the chair lady was actually a fairy godmother spy, or she had her own magic mirror, or maybe Farquaad sent out a newsletter to the neighboring kingdoms about his intentions to become a king. Either way, 
I believe word got back to her, which is why Charming left to save Fiona around the same time that Shrek journeyed to her tower. The timeline lines up to suggest that Charming's arrival was reactionary to Farquaad's actions, which I really hadn't considered until I started thinking about this question. It just seems so clear now why Charming barely missed the princess. Knowing that Farquaad had the ability to send armies after Fiona, I think Charming immediately went to face blistering winds and scorching deserts, but that meant he also had to travel for many days and nights to reach the Dragon's Keep. Shrek and Donkey, on the other hand, walked through a field, went past some rocks, and marched through some plains to get to Fiona's prison in like a day. <laughs> this definitely wasn't a grand journey like Charming had. Sure, it's big enough. But look at the location. <laughs> While Shrek was about a day's journey or a short dragon ride to Duloc and Fiona's tower from his home, Charming was hundreds of miles away since he and his mother lived close to far, far away, which we come to learn was a long, long distance away from Shrek's swamp and that area of the world. Far, far. It sure seems like this would have been a great time for Fairy Godmother to use some of that teleportation magic that we see Merlin use in Shrek the Third. But instead, Charming travels on horseback to the princess and completely misses the big rescue because he hadn't been proactive enough to be the first person who was capable of actually getting Fiona out of that tower. If Farquaad would have sent normal soldiers individually to the Dragon's Keep, Charming would have had no trouble reaching Fiona in time because the dragon would have scourged all of the champions, most likely. But because Farquaad sent Shrek first, Charming never got an opportunity to make it in time to save the princess. A lifetime of planning, training, and dreaming had gone into preparing Prince Charming for his moment to live out his happily ever after by becoming Fiona's savior. But all of that crumbled when a non traditional leader struck a deal with an ogre and beat him to it. But let me know down below what your thoughts and theories are surrounding why Charming showed up late to Fiona's tower. Also make sure to subscribe and click the beautiful bell and then click on another magical video in the description or on the screen. Finally, thanks for watching and have a magical day.